Why is it that some people you are around drain your energy while other people you're around may actually enhance your energy? Some people, it may feel very hard to be around. You may find yourself feeling more depleted by the time you leave or by the time they leave than when they were there. And you feel like you just want to go home, cocoon yourself and not be around the energy. But other people, it is so easy to be around. And there is this energy of feeling like more motivated, more inspired and just more present in general. And what can you do energetically to shift your energy so that instead of being affected by other people, you are the one setting the frame. Now, what I'm about to share with you in this video completely shifted my energy. It made me more magnetic. It allowed me to not be so affected by other people's energies. It allowed me to understand what was really going on. And once I learned it, to be honest, I ended up setting more boundaries because I understood that the people I was surrounding myself with energetically, we are absorbing their thoughts. We are absorbing their motivations, even their belief systems we absorb. And this is done at a subconscious level. So you could say, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to go meet certain people that have very limited views on life. I'm not going to absorb their energy. But subconsciously, if you're around them enough, it may leak onto you. This is why it'll be very hard for someone that say somebody is very much overweight and around a whole bunch of other people that are overweight and they start to get in shape. What happens is they will literally feel guilty going to the gym or eating cleaner because they will feel the judgment and the triggers of the people around them that are feeling triggered because it's reflecting back to them something they're not doing for themselves. So what happens is control. Think of guilt as a form of control. It's an emotion that controls us, whether we're feeling the guilt or whether they're projecting the guilt onto us. Like who are you trying to be by going to the gym? Oh, you're eating all healthy now, aren't you? As if there's some shame with that. But do you see what people are fighting for is they are fighting for familiar. And one of the sad parts of this process is, is it may feel normalized to be around people that have very toxic energy. And when we heal the part of ourself that has normalized toxic energy, we also find that the person we were attracting that was draining our energy has served its purpose and we can now let that go. This happens when you heal the parts of yourself, you will see that you no longer resonate with certain people in your life any longer. It's almost like the draining of the energy was only allowed because there was a part of you that felt like you had to let them drain it or even believed they could drain your energy. Now let's look at this. This completely changed my life when I, when I learned this. So, the people say the people we surround ourselves with, there's a certain energy and our energetic field expands beyond just our skin. We have an energetic field that goes around our body within it has the accumulated motions and thoughts that we are continuously thinking. And they can show this with different machines as well. When it comes to the emotions we feel on our energetic field, uh, the effect on our energetic field. And when we're feeling dysregulated and we go somewhere, what effect on people do you think that has? If you are dysregulated and you're around other people, it will most likely make them dysregulated as well. Whereas if somebody else is dysregulated, comes around you and you're kind of neutral, it may bring you into a dysregulated state. And remember, people fight for familiarity. I have a buddy of mine that was telling me that there's a member of his family that always is like, kind of like watching the news and always like doomsday. Like, did you see on the news that there's this crazy stuff happening? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? And if you're not like, oh my God, yes, that's crazy. It's almost like they feel alone. So you're like, oh yeah, I guess it was kind of bad. 
But do you see how, do you see how someone may want someone else to feel fear so that they know they're not alone on their fear? So when you are around other people, you have an energy field and they have their energy field. And if they are dysregulated, it will have an effect on yours. It can have the effect of bringing you more likely into code dysregulation. However, when you co-regulate yourself, you have the ability to bring people into a co-regulation. So if somebody comes up to you and they go, oh my gosh, did you see what was happening? And you're, you, you choose not to be, you choose not to be like either resistant, both not resistant, like don't get that negative stuff around me, but also not buying into it. Like, oh my God, you're so right. What happens is you can remain in your own frame. You can regulate yourself and not let it affect you. It has to do with how present are you inside of your own body And how much do you internalize other people's emotions? How much do you, do you, uh, you don't have to agree with everyone's reality. Now this doesn't mean disassociating and agreeing, like, like saying, oh, I'm not saying like this horrible stuff is happening in the world, but you have a choice to whether you internalize it and you let it dysregulate yourself. Well, I think one of the biggest gifts we can give to the world is to remain in a higher vibrational state to be present, to be adding our unique gift into the world, that adds an energy into the collective consciousness that is better than people saying, let's just get in, let's just all be fearful. It's almost like people think the world is gonna change the more people that blast fear into the world. I get people that message me sometimes and they're like, you know, er everything that's happening in the world, they're like, why aren't you talking about this? Why aren't you talking about this with your, you're following. And it's like, why is it my responsibility to talk about stuff that I'm not equipped to talk about when I could instead talk about the stuff that I believe makes a difference in my life and other people's lives? And what by, by projecting the fear out into the world and getting more people afraid, why does that benefit? If anything, it harms it more because then there's more negative thought energy that's being put towards it. What we need is more thoughts of unity, more thoughts of peace, of empowerment, of transforming the stories that we have that are keeping us trapped in that level of consciousness. Now, one of the major things that I had to learn to stop attracting toxic people into my life is I had to realize I was doing it for a reason, subconsciously. You see, we attract people to mirror back what we believe about ourselves. So if we believe, for example, that people are controlling and manipulative and that they can't be trusted, we will attract people that are controlling and manipulative and can't be trusted. And even after, this is a lot of times done at a subconscious level. I've shared it a bajillion times on my channel, but attracting similar archetype to the ex-stepmom control energy in a nine to five job that I had. As a manager, same type of personality and everything. Why am I attracting this? Well, part of it too was my stories. I had stories of blame around my childhood. And I want you to look at this. It could be uncomfortable to look at, but are there stories of blame towards your childhood, towards a parent, a sibling, someone in your life that did something because is the, if there is a story that is on autopilot of blame, that is also a story of an externalization of power and of making ourselves the victim. And I think that because I had a harder childhood from seven to 17 years old, didn't have much of a childhood, didn't have much freedom, wasn't allowed to have friends, get enough food to eat, all of that. I think that what rationalized my childhood is that I was It was not fair. I was a victim. And it was almost like by being able to relate with people, like there was this tendency I had when I related with people to like be vulnerable and to show, and if I could be vulnerable, then they would be vulnerable and we have this deeper level connection. But one of the things I became aware of is that that was a story that was keeping me trapped into similar patterns over and over again, because I was always blaming someone else's energy. If we're blaming, we're externalizing our power. 
And think of that same blame story may be the same story that this person's disregard is, is not regulated. Their nervous system is not regulated. Our nervous system wants to find homeostasis with what is familiar. Familiar. Familial. Feels like family. So did you have a regulated nervous system in your family or was it chaotic? Because if it's chaotic, one of the reasons you may attract people who are draining is because that chaotic energy feels familiar, familiar, familial. Don't you see that you can choose whether it's still normalized or you can heal that inner child part of yourself that feels like you have to be in the chaos. Sometimes there's drama. Sometimes we may think I've had times where I've drawn boundaries or cut certain people out of my life that were, had a lot of drama that brought into my life. And afterwards there was almost withdrawals of like being free of the drama, but like, where's the next drama thing in my life? And then being aware that there's a part of myself I can begin to soothe and I can let things be more relaxed, more regulated. But one thing that I had to become aware of is this story of blame. I remember even something that happened when I moved to Sedona, Arizona, is I got this house, I remodeled this house, and there was this contractor that did things very poorly, and things did not end well with this contractor, including one thing that happened is inside one of the walls, um, they put in, I had a steam shower unit I had put into the master bathroom and the steam shower unit was not installed correctly. So every time the steam unit went on, it was putting water into the walls for like months and months until there was black mold. And I had to spend like a hundred thousand dollars or $80,000 to fix black mold in the house, which was not covered by insurance for some reason. They got out of it somehow. <laughs> and then there's another story of blame. So I had the story. So this happened and it was, uh, I realized that there was this story that I had of blame around the contractor, even blame around the insurance company, because it's like, why do I pay for insurance if the insurance never actually, they pay, pay for it. When I bought the house, also there was roof problems that cost $20,000 to fix. And I'm like, why did I get insurance? Why am I paying for insurance if they got out of everything? It's like, you didn't check the water heater two years ago from some handyman. So we're not covering it. And I'm like, what? It didn't make sense to me, but there was this definitely the story of blame that I had around this whole situation. Around the person, around the, um, the insurance company even, but it was very much dysregulating my own nervous system. There was a part of me though, that became aware that there were certain stories I had around this draining energy where I believed that I was in a way that was normal. Even before that, before I moved into this house, I lived in a house in Vegas with a landlord because I was renting a house. It was a very nice, it was one of my favorite houses I lived in. Um, but the owner of the house was super neurotic. It was like, uh, I remember three, two, three weeks, I moved into the house two weeks later, the oven, the, I, I went to use the oven for the first time and it wasn't working. He wanted to charge me $800 to fix the oven when I never used the oven and I worked it, I, I lived there for two weeks, used the oven for the first time. And I'm like, no, 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 this isn't the way it works. I'm renting the house. I don't pay to fix the oven when it wasn't working when I moved in, you know? And it was like a constant, uh, it's kind of like this constant reflection. Another thing that happened was the, um, the pool was leaking in that house and I had 100,000 gallons of water that was leaked and I had to pay $2,000 water bill. Now it sounds like I'm, I'm um, what you call it? I'm complaining. But what I'm saying is that dynamic where I had to like stand up for myself and eventually I got out of that like whole contract and everything. But there was a part of me, the reason I'm telling you this is there was a part of me that was used to fighting for things not being fair. It's not fair. I moved into this house. I'm paying all this money for rent. The, the pool, because he didn't want to fix the pool pump that was leaking because it would cost him a lot of money. I'm now paying $2,000 for like two months. I paid like a whole bunch of money for a water bill because he didn't want to fix it. That's not fair. 
this guy I had contract my house in Sedona did all this stuff not correctly, and now I'm paying for it. That's not fair. Insurance company won't pay for it. That's not fair. Eventually, I became aware that I was blaming and in victim mode. And I was like, you know what? Instead of being in victim mode, I'm going to stand up for myself. And I remember saying, no, I'm not paying. Like, if, if you don't get this pool fixed, you're going to pay the, the water bill because it's not fair that I have to pay $2,000 because you don't want to fix the pool because you're trying to sell the house. Or uh, with the other, the house in Sedona, it was a similar thing when I stand up for myself and just cut out dealing with the person, dealt with it, and then healed that energy inside of myself. So the reason I'm saying all this is because instead of becoming, a, it may feel very familiar and normal to be a victim and to be around other people that have dysregulated energy and it's their fault that I'm not feeling a certain way, but part of taking your power back is either setting boundaries, which feel unfamiliar at first, but when you set boundaries, you end up gaining respect as a, as a natural reflection of that. But also understand that you can feel safe inside of your own body, feel the separation between you and other people. You can begin to regulate your own nervous system. And one of the most powerful ways I found to do this, by the way, is to clear out the energetic, the energy of unprocessed emotion out of your field using something called breath work. One of the most powerful things I've ever done in my life is I got certified in breath work because I would see this done at my live events and my challenges and people were so transformed. I got certified in it. And part of being certified was I had to go through it. And I had some of the biggest releases in my entire life. And uh, if you want to experience breathwork for free, you can do so in High Vibe Tribe. It's my free community. I have breathwork in there. It's a two hour long ceremony. You can watch it for free. I'll go ahead and link it below in the description box. But uh, join High Vibe Tribe and do that breathwork. Watch how much your life begins to change and understand that a huge part of this process is feeling safe inside of your own body. A huge part of this process is becoming aware of your beliefs, of your, uh, of your identity, of what you feel responsible for. If you feel responsible for other people's energies, you will take on their tension. You will take on their energy literally. But feeling safe in the bottom three chakras is what really allows you to then feel the separation between you and other people, which gives you more magnetic energy. When you heal that energy inside of yourself, certain people will begin to fall out of your life. And you'll, you won't feel so guilty about it because you'll know it served its purpose, but it no longer resonates with you. So if you want a video to show you step-by-step -step how to do this, the inner, child, uh, the inner child dynamics that are involved with feeling safe inside of your own body, one of my most popular videos is from a live event. If you are someone that can feel other people's energies, watch this video, it will change your life. Put it right here. So empaths, people that can feel other people's energy, this is both a superpower 